Uh, if I could, just because I think you, you just opened a couple of things that are really interesting topics to speak on would be um, when we're talking about uh, the feeling the muscle and the muscle, you know, all these things about feeling muscles don't have brains and also they don't know how they're being loaded. All they know is that they're being loaded. Uh, would right. you mind speak? Would you mind speaking and, and clarifying that for people who think that you know you have to squat so-called heavy weight with a, a squat a deadlift? Muscles don't care how they're loaded; they just want to be loaded. Could, could you right. just speak speak on that? So um, you know, um, most of us, um, some more than others, have been brainwashed. You know, have had a lot of people telling us we've been reading that you know the more weight you lift, the better. The more weight you lift, the more the muscle grows. Well, I just explained why the 50 pound dumbbell isn't gonna give you more growth than the 45 pound dumbbell, all things being equal in terms of intensity. So that's not true. But when you're doing any particular exercise, every exercise has a mechanical profile. And that involves the angle of those limbs relative to the direction of resistance, whether it's gravity or a cable or whatever. Um, and then that turns into percentages of load, okay? So in the simplest of terms, um, any lever, any limb that is parallel to gravity or parallel to whatever the direction of resistance is if it's a cable. So we're talking about freeway gravity, we're talking about vertical, because gravity is vertical. If you were to go up to somebody who's standing with a 400 pound barbell on their back and they're about to squat, but they haven't started squatting yet. They're just standing there and their lower legs are vertical, their upper legs are vertical, their torso. You can tap them on the quadricep and it's relaxed. It's not loaded yet. It's not activated yet. And that's because regardless of the 400 pounds, the limb that is being operated by the quadriceps is in the neutral position. Same with the limb that's operated by the, by the gluteus, right? So as that person starts to descend, and those limbs start to veer from the neutral position. They start to increase the load to their appropriate muscle, but in percentages. It's not an on or off switch. It's not black and white, right? So it's not like off, on. It's off, on a little bit, on more, more. It's like a dimmer switch, right? So it gets brightest when it's horizontal. It's half as bright half as on when it's halfway between neutral and maximum, right? Generally speaking. So when you look at an illustration that says, you know, here's this person squatting and the quads are red and the glutes are red. It's like, well, you're making it look like it's just on or off. It's not on or off. It's degrees of on, right? Now, if you're going to lower a particular muscle, let's just hypothetically choose a way to just say 90 pounds. A muscle is experiencing 90 pounds of resistance in a particular exercise. It doesn't have eyes. It doesn't have ears. It, it can't see what you're doing. It only knows that it is challenged with 90 pounds of resistance. It could be 90 pounds being 30% of 300 pounds you're lifting. It could be 90% of 100 pounds you're lifting. It doesn't know or care. Either way, it's 90 pounds. It's not gonna grow more getting 90 pounds from the 300 pounds you're lifting as compared to the 90 pounds it would get with 100 pounds of lifting. It's only gonna grow with the 90 pounds. That's all it cares about. That's all it knows. So the wisest strategy is to get the most amount of muscle load with the least amount of, of, of actual weight because you use the smartest mechanics. It is foolish to select the exercise that allows you so you lift 300 pounds just because you think 300 pounds is better. Completely blind to the fact that it's still only 90 pounds to the muscle. 90 pounds to the muscle. So um, whenever you're dealing with a compound exercise, one, you're dealing with an exercise that's involved in the contribution of three or four muscles. In other words, we don't know how much. You don't know how much each one of those muscles is. All you know is the group of them with those particular angle of limbs relative to gravity, allow you to lift, let's say 300 or 400 pounds. It's all you know. If you were to do the math and you can do the math with what we teach, um, you, can, you can figure out that you're actually getting less quadricep load with that 300 pounds than you are with that, than that guy over there is with the body weight 60 squat. 
because of the mechanics, because of the physics. And also, the guy that's I, mean, doing, if, you know, I mean, if I, if I may, I mean, you should also speak on the fact that there's significantly less range of motion in the active, you know, the actual moving lever during a squat as well. I mean, all, all of these things compromise the movement, the muscle, again, it doesn't know, it just knows it's a lacking range of motion, you know, all these things. Right. So what I, what I always say is, look, um, let's start off with the, the basic, basic understanding that when you're doing a compound movement, let's just say three muscles are working. They're working with a certain amount of load that may or may not be to their capacity, maybe less than their capacity, it might be more than their capacity. I mean, in other words, they might be getting overloaded. Um, they're working with a certain amount of range of motion. They're working with a certain early or late phase loading. They're working with a certain amount. There's a lot of these factors that are that are that are that determine how much value, how much benefit that muscle is getting. Right. So the question you should be asking is if my quads are working during squats and my glutes are working during squats. How does that glute activation and that quad activation compare during that squat to what it would experience during that leg extension or that hip extension? And what you would realize once you break it all down, you get better quadricep activation with an isolated quadricep exercise than the quadricep experiences during a compound squat for all of these 16 reasons. Same thing with the glutes, right? So that's why we have these 16 factors that we use sort of as a reference. Some of them are mechanical, some of them are anatomical, some of them are neurological, and they tell you whether or not this particular exercise rates high, medium, low, on that scale. And all you should be worried about, if you really want to have the wisest strategy, your goal should be to make sure that each muscle of your body is optimally stimulated during its workout. When you realize that it's unlikely to happen, when it's doing participating in a compound movement. The idea that you're saving time because you're working three muscles, that goes out the window, right? You have to ask yourself, is this muscle working as best as it can work? Most people will tell you, yeah, I do the squat because it saves time, but oh, by the way, I also do a second quarters of exercise and a second glute exercise. Well, then why do you do that? In other words, I save time by only doing the isolate and skipping this one because I get all I need from this quad and this gluteus exercise. Don't waste time on the one that's going to give you a compromised benefit. 